All right, and welcome everyone to the Jeanette Biro podcast. I'm Jeanette Biro, and as always, thank you so much for joining me today as we dive into some more concepts about expanding consciousness and connecting with spirit and all things woo. Really, that's why we're here. So today's podcast is uh, really quite cool, and this one was entirely from a conversation I had with my counsel. Now, when I say my counsel, I'm talking about my personal guide, three guides to the light, Ascended Master Sanat Kumara, and many others. I've got light beings and you name it. And it was really neat because this kind of came from the imagery I could give you is like we were all sitting around this um, almost like outdoor fire in the trees, really. And in this, we were just kind of like chatting and, and pondering ideas. And in this came the topic of the value of each individual human journey. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today is the reason you're here is for you. You are here on this planet for you. You are the one that matters. Your journey is so important. It needs to be front and center for you. Now I say that with the caveat of obviously being self-centered and narrow-minded is not what I'm getting at <laughs> with that. It's not about being uh, egotistical and self-involved. We can be so kind and caring and compassionate and loving to those around us, our family, our friends, and all of that. But what they mean by you matter, your journey is what matters, is that we are here on this planet as a soul to learn lessons. And sometimes we get disconnected from that and we start living our lives for the people around us. We start making decisions for the people, our own personal decisions for people around us. We're not deciding based on what we want, we're deciding based on what would suit the other person best. And of course, when I'm talking about children in reference to children, well then that's different. I think that's a different category in many ways, especially when they're young. We have to choose for them in many circumstances. But to other adults or older children, in your life, friends, family, you need to start choosing your journeys for you. Otherwise, you're missing the maximum potential of what you can gain and learn as a human, but even more so as your soul in this lifetime. So that's what we're talking about. And so I really wanna start in, first of all, with the idea that uh, in this conversation again with my counsel was, how much we as a collective give our power away. Now, we, I'm sure all of us sitting here reflecting on this, um, can see that this can happen so easily and so quickly. But when we start to make decisions that aren't aligned with us and don't feel right, that's when we start to give our power away. And that can happen in really big situations, but that can also happen in really small situations that happen more and more and more often over time and over time it creates a greater drain. Like, if you don't like the way somebody treats you but instead of telling them that or creating a boundary, you just kind of allow it to happen but you try to just sort of cut it off or appease it or you know shift gears and divert attention or all those different tactics, by not putting a boundary there means that tap is always left on. And every time the person comes back to take a bit more from that energy or create that energy exchange that doesn't suit you, it's like it, it uh, inches that hose bib open a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And over time what happens is there is a greater flow of energy being pulled from you when you didn't even want it in the first place. So what's needed is when something doesn't feel right for you is for you to really step back and ask, why doesn't it feel right? What would I need to do in this situation to make it right? And how can I communicate that in the highest good of all involved so that you stand up for yourself, but that you also can express it to the person in the kindest way possible so that maybe they may even learn something they didn't realize they were doing. It's so important because then what happens if we don't do that and we start giving our power away, eventually we become depleted. And when we become depleted is when our ego starts to act as um, 
kind of as like a bodyguard. And then we can find ourselves reacting to things much more aggressively, uh, sharply, we're more easily irritated. Say we become more vengeful in thoughts or feelings, uh, then that can lead to anger, sadness, anxiety, depression, because our power is being pulled away. So that's an example of a situation with an actual person that we can, you know, communicate something to. Now, if you find you can't communicate with that person for whatever reason, you can also communicate to the person's higher self. So I know there's some situations where people are like, well, you cannot tell this person anything or you can't get anywhere or I could never say that to that person. Then you can go to that person's higher self. And if you even need it, you can put a chair out in front of you, ask the person's higher self to sit down, envision them sitting down and then have that conversation with their higher self and say, hey, this is what I'm not okay with. This is where it's really bothering me. I need to step back here. I need to whatever it may be you need to say. And you'll know that that person's higher self will hear you. And most often, and I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but high 90s, this actually works really well. And the person will start to adjust little bits of their behavior without knowing why. And you will notice that. And that's because you were willing to set an intent of setting a boundary with that energy so it didn't pull your power away. So that's what we can do with individuals. Now, when it comes to, uh, say, media things or collective things, that can pull our power away too, but that requires us to deal with it in a way that we choose to do something different with our energy. So if you find that watching the news is very triggering for you, as an example, I use this example all the time, but if you find it very triggering, it stirs you into fear, which pulls your power away again, then the action would most likely be you stepping back from watching it or checking in or whatnot all the time. Maybe decrease that amount so that you can pull your power back to being centered. Again, the choices come from you. And that's the biggest thing is when we don't recognize that our journey here on this planet is the one that is most important for us, we lose our power. We lose our ability to consciously choose what feels right in the next step. Now, that, that, the next thing that we talked about was that what you say matters. And what you say matters within the 3D world, we've already just talked about that, right? With people, with uh, how you choose to do things with media and whatever else triggers you, but even with spirit. And this is where I loved how this conversation went with spirit, was that we talked about how what you say matters with spirit just as much as it would with anything else. And that means if you find you are opening up connecting in with spirit, gaining more insights, intuitions, and so on and so forth, but it is overwhelming and it is coming to a place where it's too much. What you say matters. You can also set a boundary with spirit. Because there's one thing that I was saying to them yesterday, I was like, you know, one thing you, have to guys, you guys have to remember is that the perspective is very different when you're embodied and when you're not. And I say that because I vividly remember my perspective when I was in spirit form on the other side during my near-death experience to how I am embodied in a human body right now. They're very different. They are one and the same. Both were 100% me. But the experience we have of being a human and that emotional consciousness is very different from the other one. And so I say that because this is one of the most pivotal things we need to know, especially as light workers, mediums, channelers, sensitive, anyone that really truly chooses to look to spirit for guidance and understanding, your ability to set boundaries, your ability to choose for your path, still, even in connection with spirit, is most important and front and center. Meaning if you need to set boundaries with spirit, if either the information is not working, you're not understanding it, what they're trying to give you, or if it's too much, or if they're keeping you up at nighttime and you can't sleep, you have to be the one that's willing to set the boundaries wherever you need, or explain to them the kinds of communications you want, what feels right for you. They're gonna often, when you first open up, give you a whole bunch of different things to experience so that you can see which ones work better for you, which, which you are most naturally uh, open to. And for some people that may, may be clairvoyance, so your ability to see spirit, and for others, it might be your intuitive kind of like cognitive knowing, precognition, premonition, intuitive sense. 
So some of you might find one way works easier than the other. Either way, it's all good. But if there's one that you really don't like, you can set a boundary. If there's one you do like, you can invite that one in. Be willing to communicate and use your voice with spirit as much as you would anybody else. Because again, to really thrive as best as possible on this planet, as a human being, you need to prioritize your life and your wellness in your mind, which comes so much from boundaries, gives us peace of mind. Your body, choosing to rest when you need to rest, move it when you need to move it, and so on and so forth. And your spirit, which is opening your connection to spirit because it's such a beautiful bounty, but also setting parameters on what you're okay with. You are in the driver's seat. And this is what spirit really wanted us to understand. And this is what the really cool conversation was because again, I was in a position where I felt I could really use my voice. And so instead of sitting in this council meeting and just being like, oh my gosh, wow, okay, everything you say, whatever you say, yes, I'll repeat it word for word. I also chose to get involved and share my perspective as well. Just as I'm encouraging you guys to do is literally what I did and the bounty that I got from that and the understandings I got from that, plus their willingness to work with me was really significant. And so I joke with people all the time that I'll argue with spirit and I do, but it's always in a respectful way, first of all, but it's in a way that whether they are embodied or not embodied, my opinion also matters. I do not need to do anything that doesn't feel aligned with me. Even if spirit is like, you should go do this, or this is in your best alignment. If from my perspective, it doesn't feel right at this point, then that is okay. That is my sovereign choice. And so sovereignty is a big key word that a lot of people are using these days. And it is very valuable because when you are in sovereignty with yourself, if you are honoring your sovereign voice, you are honoring your choices, your journey, your direction moving forward. And again, that is the key. This is all about your journey is what they were saying. So what you choose to do from here, where you choose to go, what you choose to manifest is completely in co-creation. You can picture it this way. Picture that you are the CEO of the company that is you, okay? If your name is John Smith, you are the CEO of John Smith Corp, okay? You also have other uh, COOs and CSOs and whatever working with you for John Smith Corp. So you guys are co-creating together this beautiful bounty and harmony, which is really what everybody's counsel and guides are here for is to co-create with you. But you need to be an active part, an active participant, sitting at the helm of it, not telling everybody what to do by any means, but being a part of all the information coming in and then choosing which direction to go, which next thing to do, how you want to align, what it feels like when you're aligned, and then comparing all the things that come in and the choices that come in against that feeling. That's where we get our power back. And there's nothing cocky about it either. It's just about being in alignment. As we heal our bodies, as we heal our minds, and as we heal our spirits by bringing back fragmented parts of it, all of those things, we come back into alignment. And that is the whole desire of this journey is to come back into alignment. But we have to do that through conscious choice. And once we recognize that key, once we recognize we hold the key to alignment by healing the things, mending the things, and checking every choice we make to see whether it aligns with us or not, that is when we hold the power. And we can see that it's not a power to destroy others or take over others or anything like that. It's not a negative power. It's actually a beautiful, bountiful power. And it's a power that within that we feel safe and secure because we as an individual have made a space of safety and security for self. That is the most important place is when our self can deal with our ego self and also with our spirit self and the three work together in harmony, recognizing they're actually all one, everybody's safe, then that is a place of power and harmony manifesting abilities come rampant after that, that is a place of power. That is yours 
And when you decide that your journey is the most important and that to give from others from that point of power means you have tons to give, that's when you can start really living a life of abundance. So I'm really happy to share that with you guys. I wish I could have invited you all uh, to see this council meeting and how chill it was, like really chilled out and relaxed, but how powerful it was. It was like a meeting of minds and a meeting of experiences and perspectives of all different kinds where everybody shared ideas and, and everything was listened to and everything was important. And it came out with these beautiful understandings. And so, you know, if I was an artist, I would draw that picture, but you would probably just get stigmatin from me. But uh, I hope that helps. And I hope you guys could feel into the energy of what was coming through because it was really, really beautiful and significant. And so I hope it inspires you to really look at your journey today, your life, your sense of knowing. If you don't know what it feels like to be in alignment, then make that your priority to get to know what that feels like. There's such of value in it. So I will leave you with that for this week. I will be back next week with more. And also I do want to say if you guys haven't checked it out yet already, check out Spirit Coffee Talk on the Avalon Spirit YouTube page. Uh, myself, Lisa Richmond and Elise Cathery, we are the mediums and channelers of Avalon Spirit. We get together once a week and we chat and basically shoot the shit, part of my language, of what happens in the world of spirit that week. Uh, what's going on energetically and it's often a lot of fun so if you're liking these vibes check that one out as well and also if you haven't already too check out Avalon Spirit Facebook group uh, I'm on there every day posting stuff sharing stuff and for anything else check out Avalon Spirit 